breaking news coming up uh, Saturday night. Penn State picked up a commit in the class of 2026. Guy down in Ryan's neck of the woods, Messiah Mickens. So, Ryan, tell us about Messiah Mickens and what Penn State is getting with this uh, long-in-the-future commit for the class of 26. Yeah, I mean, this was one I think that long-term we projected, right? I didn't think it would be Saturday. Although, I, I got to say, I, I started hearing whispers Saturday afternoon uh, that Messiah was close. I didn't know it was going to come a couple hours later. Um, we were at the uh, Susquehanna game. A couple people were were talking about it. Messiah actually would have went to Susquehanna uh, if he didn't decide to go to Trinity. But uh, get to know Messiah a little bit. 5'10", 195. Listed as an athlete uh, on three, but he's going to be a running back uh, for the Nittly Lions. Had a massive impact on Trinity last year. I, I think you know we, we've talked a lot about Jordan Hill being there and Michael Motti being there. And, and just their impact on on the area, on players wanting to play for them. I mean, this is a team that won three and six uh, a couple years ago, and uh, then in Jordan's first year, uh, didn't have a winning record for a decade. And then in Messiah Mickens' first year, not only do they win a District 3 championship, but they go all the way to the PIAA semifinals last year. So, I mean, talk about uh, Jordan and, and Madi. Obviously, Madi wasn't there last year, but Jordan's pool uh, – Pool as in, you know, getting getting players and interests uh, from throughout the area. Messiah is kind of the first example of, of players really wanting to play for him. And uh, I think we're going to see a, a lot more of that here in, in the months and uh, or excuse me, years to come. Uh, but just I mean, I don't want to overthink it too much. There's a lot of growth here still. But uh, talking to Jordan uh, loves his vision. You know, I, I think that's kind of the yeah. one thing that Jordan's always said is is on a different level uh, from, from most players his age. Um, good speed too. Uh, ran a four five up at Penn State in the summer. Uh, so you know, there's plenty to plenty to work with there. Already at five ten, pushing two two hundred pounds. I'd be very curious to see how he grows over the over the years ahead. But uh, yeah, I mean, this is a player I thought would probably end up at Penn State at some point. But uh, you would have told me August twenty first, twenty twenty three is when he committed. I'd have been a little surprised. Uh, Fitz, you you were talking about this a little bit. Um, this is both you guys saw this coming, but maybe this is how did this come about where he did commit so early in the process? We actually got wind. If you take a look at our lash bash thread uh, in late July, I got wind that he would like wanted to commit to Penn State. Penn State, you know, they handle these things pretty smart. They talk to these kids. They say, hey, hey, here's what's in front of you. He's a 2026 kid. He's a sophomore in high school. Like that this is a long way to go. Not that I think that he's a guy that would either go back or try and find himself in there, but there's just so many things that can happen between now and his senior year when he signs. Um, so like do your due diligence, check some, check some schools out. And I know that, that he, he hasn't done that since the lash bash because he hasn't had an opportunity to, um, but this kid was pretty locked on Penn state. Again, the timing of the decision is is going to be what uh, I think gets people here. Is that's a long time before he signs. I, again, yeah. I think he sticks. Um, but I mean, sophomore in high school. That's what we're talking about here. So a lot of development left ahead. Um, he's 5'10", 195, runs a four five. So great base to work with athletically. Um, he's got he's number thirty player nationally by twenty four seven. To me, that's probably a little bit high, but like you're talking about ranking 2026 20, guys right now, which it's too early to do that. So mm -hmm. that's where I'm at on Messiah Mickens. Tremendous prospect, um, really good one to get in the boat. And as we've talked about with Penn State in 2024, 2025, 2026 now, running back recruiting is something like it is, it is not, uh, it is not like other positions. They are a de they are in demand. They have been in demand because of the product that they've put out on the field over the last decade. Um, these kids want to be Saquon. They want to be Miles Sanders. They're going to want to be Nick, Nick Singleton and Katron Allen. They're, they're, this is something that I don't want to say recruits itself, but when you look at some of the positions nationally, uh, you know, Penn State running back recruiting is right up there with uh, with some of these other positions. So another big pickup, uh, keep them in the state. That 2026 group in the mid-state kind of reminds me of that 2023 do the math here 2022 group in the mid-state uh with ivy flowers singleton you know just a you could see those guys coming for a while there um mm -hmm. and you look at messiah mickens kevin brown over at harrisburg tyler merrill at cumberland valley and i know i'm missing a few more uh brooks at uh at bishop mcdevitt so i mean the mid-state every couple of cycles seems to come back into focus here and, and you're seeing that in 2026 and to get a guy on board um this early is uh you know it's different certainly different but at the same yeah. time it's a really good start for Penn State. And every position is built on 
athleticism and your potential as a football player, but running back especially. I think we had this conversation about Keandre Barker. The fact that Penn State took that commitment so early in the process, they seem to feel pretty confident that his athleticism, you guys have underlined this, but I just kind of want to like point it out here that a 2026 running back is also like this kid does have some some pretty – great talent immediately you know we talked about Alabama Tennessee uh, a lot of schools being interested in him as a running back so early in the process because he has those obvious physical traits is that fair to say that like he is going to be a special player or you're still waiting to see what he turns into because that's to me that's the biggest mystery about a guy who's in the 26 class who has all of this uh, these this attention these offers Penn State willing to go out on a limb in 25 and 26 and pick these guys up early, knowing that development process sometimes can go in different directions. It fits. Is that, is that a fair way to paint that picture overall? That's the chance you take. I mean, you look at running back at the high school level, and you can be a dude that jumps onto the scene as a freshman, has a bunch of carries, has a bunch of yards. I always bring up Jordan Houston, who was a guy that Penn State recruited before anybody. Um, he ended up at NC State, but Penn State was not recruiting him by the time he made a decision. So, but they, they were the first program to offer him as a freshman down there in Virginia. So you have to sort of take some risk analysis here when you're talking about running backs in the long term. I think Messiah is going to be, you know, in, in terms of his uh, level of volatility, I guess, with uh, with where he's going to be as a prospect, probably a little bit lower because we, we know a lot about him. We have a lot of data on him. Uh, I think he ran like uh four seven or something like that at Under Armour was down in the four fives at Penn State. So, you know, going in the right direction athletically, he's been on the radar, you know, Texas A&M offered him as a, as a freshman. So he's been on there forever. So you're never, you're never quite sure how that's going to pan out. Is he going to be the best option two years from now? I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I know that he will be, um, but he's the, he's pretty good product to, or pretty good um, piece of clay to start with right now. If you're talking about running back. So yes, th- that worry is there. I don't want to sit here and talk here about it on his commitment show to think that, you know, not all running backs are the same when they're seniors as they are in sophomores, but it is, it is uh, a reality that you have to look at with some guys. Uh, like I said, yeah. confident in Mickens. I think he's a really good player. Um, and I think he could fit in this running back room, which to me, that's the, that's the thing that matters when you talk about Penn state's running back room, how they've come along. Yes. There have been times when it's been up and down, but uh, for the most part, it's been full speed ahead under Jay Wan Sider. And I think he got another good one. Yeah, and Ryan, uh, coming back to you, that Penn State connection and, and kind of the, the confidence they have in not only Mickens a, a, as a person, you know, on that side of things, but also the, the coaches that he's with, that gives them that extra boost of confidence, I would imagine, to uh, agree to a guy coming on board in 26 when we've seen historically uh, players that commit super early. This is always kind of an, an, inter- an interesting ride over the, the next couple of years. Not a lot of not a lot of guys commit this early to begin with, right? Right. I mean, I think Masai has actually camped the Penn State twice now, I believe. Uh, so you know, you have two two years or uh, two camps worth of data. You have the Under Armour camp, another data point, uh, which you know Penn State gets all that information. So you you have pretty much as much data as you can get for a, a freshman at this point. And Sean, I correct you on one thing. You said a and offered him as a freshman. They offered him as before he was a freshman. He was an eighth grader is when they and offered him. As soon was, as I said that, I'm like, that's wrong. That's too, because yeah. freshman year only would have been last year. And he's been, he seems right. like he's been on the radar even longer than that. And obviously he has been. So yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll so, defer to my Harrisburg uh, expert here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, the other thing you were saying too, though, is, is, you know, having Jordan Hill there, having Michael Motti there, obviously these guys, uh, no, have seen, I mean, Jordan, especially Michael's only been there for a couple, couple weeks now, or he's been there longer than that, but you know, obviously preseason going on. So, uh, you know, having Jordan there to, to vouch and, you know, what he sees from him off the field too. you know, talking to Jordan, you know, I was asking about, you know, is a freshman one of your leaders, you know, what's he like around the guys, things like that locker room stuff. And, uh, you know, he kept coming back to his competitiveness and, and how much he pushes this team, uh, which you love to see in a, in a rising sophomore. You know, just one other thing as well uh, from talking to Jordan, you know, he was saying that a, a, a major reason, reason why Messiah wanted to make this move. You know, his dad was saying about how, you know, he's looked at Jordan. He's looked at Michael Motti and the impact that Penn State's had on them and, and the people that they've become and how much how they're respected, not just as what they've done on the field, but how they carry himself in the community, things like that. And, uh, you know, Jordan, Jordan called it one of the biggest compliments of his life, you know, having Messiah's dad say, Hey, look, you know, I see what Penn state made you. 
I want my son to, to follow in those kind of footsteps. So I think that all really bodes well to this commitment lasting. Uh, you know, if you, this would have been a player from Maryland or Virginia or New Jersey or wherever, I mean, regional guys, you know, I, I'd always be like 2026, 20, you know, we'll see. But he's a Harrisburg guy, you know, which the, obviously – they don't get all of them from this area, but usually they get most of them and those commitments stick. And then obviously, again, you have Mata, you have Jordan Hill there. Uh, there's a, there's plenty of reasons to be optimistic that this one will stick. There, stick there was the, a different uh, feel, right, Ryan, if I can come over top of you, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a different feel in Cooper Cousins than there was for Mega Barnwell. You know, that's right, kind of right. how you're looking at this thing. And I think there's a different feel in this one that Messiah – um, you know, is definitely a, a guy that we, we see sticking through the long term, um, even though, you know, some really good schools were after him. And it's still very early for 2026. But like, I, I feel better about this one than a, you would for a guy like Barnwell. And he's visited too, t -Frank, Sorry, he's visited Ohio State. He's been to Michigan. You know, he did get out and see those schools this year, which is really important because a lot of guys make these early commitments. They've seen two schools. Yeah, I think he's been to seven or so other schools so far, something like that. So, yeah, again, he's only taken one visit to all these schools, but he did get out and see them. So that's important. Good feeling for Penn State football fans with uh, all the connections to Penn State, all the feel goods there in, in the story as well as as the player. So check out BlueWhiteIllustrated.com for more information on Messiah Mickens.